Hello, and thank you for coming to this interview today. I just wanted to ask you some questions about animals, since you know a lot about them, it seems. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, well, to what extent do you think that animals feel emotion and pain? I think they feel more than us. Like, I don't know, they just, they're more caring and, like, humans are jerks. So, what you're saying is that you think they're better than us. They're not better, but I think they're more intelligent. Oh, okay. Hello, and thank you for coming to this interview today. I just wanted to ask you some questions about animals. Is that okay? Yeah. Alright, well I was just wondering, to what extent do you think that animals feel pain and emotions? I don't think that animals even feel pain or any emotion. I mean, they're just, they're made for us to eat and stuff. They don't, they don't have no feelings. Okay, so they don't have any feelings? No, they're assholes. Hello, um, thank you for coming to do an interview. Oh, hello. I was wondering what your opinion was on if animals feel emotion and pain. Ah, oh, yes. Animals. They feel many things, as they are complex beings. But emotions and pain serve no purpose to animals. And that's just the truth. So you don't think that they have any emotions? Oh, all? absolutely not. I don't think they feel anything. I uh, think it is silly to presume that they do. Oh, okay, thank you for your time. Mm-hmm. Is this thing on? All right. All right, humans, uh, I need you to do me a very simple favor. Uh, very easy, uh, not, not complicated at all. I just need you to quit telling us cats how to feel, okay? It's, it's, it's not hard. Uh, cats and other assorted rodents, just stop telling us how we feel. No one else wanted to say anything. The turtles, uh, the dogs wouldn't say anything. I, you know what? As a cat, I don't care. Uh, I will tell you that I am very relaxed. I feel plenty of human emotions. This feels very good right now, uh, honestly. But at the same time, I feel like there's something sneaking up behind me. You know, so it's kind of you know, you know um, a little bit of uh, both both worlds here. Uh, as a uh, <coughs> as a as a cat, I never said that I wasn't weird, but I do feel emotions that humans do. Now, according to scientists and other smart people, they say there are two approaches to animal emotions, and they are functional and mechanistic approaches. Mechanistic states that I basically use emotions, you know, like you humans have, to survive. Whereas the functionalism part of this comes into play when contrasting my own emotions to perhaps actual humans. For example, once I was baptized, now I fear the bath. By talking about my emotions, we are really talking about my subjective conscious experience. Now, many of you humans in the audience probably didn't even understand that, but as a cat, I understand. The struggle with the bath is real. But, of course, don't take it from me. I'm just a cat. I'm gonna send it back over to the scientist. Today we're gonna to talk about if animals feel emotions. Animals do in fact feel emotion and the main emotions that they feel are fear, shame, love, happiness, sadness, jealousy, and grief. Convergent evolution has made it remarkably similar to the human brain with as many neurons and synapses in a highly developed hippocampus and cerebral cortex. It is the hippocampus strongly associated with emotion that aids recollection by encoding important experiences into long-term memories. The ability to distinguish this importance makes elephant memory a complex and adaptable faculty beyond rote memorization. It's what allows elephants who survived a drought in their youth to recognize its warning signs in adulthood which is why clans with older matriarchs have higher survival rates. Unfortunately, it's also what makes elephants one of the few non-human animals to suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. The cerebral cortex, on the other hand, enables problem solving, which elephants display in many creative ways. They also tackle problems cooperatively, sometimes even outwitting the researchers and manipulating their partners. 
and they've grasped basic arithmetic, keeping track of the relative amounts of fruit in two baskets after multiple changes. The rare combination of memory and problem solving can explain some of elephants' most clever behaviors, but it doesn't explain some of the things we're just beginning to learn about their mental lives. Elephants communicate using everything from body signals and vocalizations to infrasound rumbles that can be heard kilometers away, and their understanding of syntax suggests that they have their own language and grammar. This sense of language may even go beyond simple communication. We know that mammals have emotions for sure because just like humans, all mammals have neuroanatomical structures such as the amygdala and neurochemical pathways in the limbic system that are important for feelings. An example of feelings that I like is a gorilla named Coco was given a kitten and she expressed love to the kitten but then the kitten ended up dying and the zookeepers uh, seen her start crying and was in a depressive state for a long time because of the death of the kitten. And then a lioness was reported to kill a gazelle who was pregnant. And then when she found out that it was pregnant, she stayed by the gazelle and acted sad towards it because she didn't realize that it was pregnant. So she showed remorse for the gazelle. So animals do in fact have emotions. Thank you, scientist Cassie. Do animals feel pain? The Journal of Korean Neurosurgical Society did a study on neuropathic pain in which they used 15 male rats, five to a mesh wire cage, and they wanted to know if deep brain stimulation alleviated the symptoms of neuropathic pain. So they exposed the left sciatic nerve and separated the three major divisions and used a tungsten electrode for electrical stimulation and a mechanical stimulation of the von Frey filament and they exposed it to their left hind paw 10 times and the stimulation interval was every five minutes and any response they had from the rat from the onset of exposing it to the electrodes until they put their foot back down was recorded. After 15 days the pain response rate score was a 9.8 to 10 out of 10. The duration of pain response was 10 to 17 seconds and during the deep brain stimulation their pain response dropped to a 4.6 to a 6.8 6 out of 10 and their duration of the pain response decreased to 1.4 to 6.8 seconds. In the first, nerves in the skin sense something harmful and communicate that information to the spinal cord. There, motor neurons activate movements that make us rapidly jerk away from the threat. This is the physical recognition of harm, called nociception. And nearly all animals, even those with very simple nervous systems, experience it. Without this ability, animals would be unable to avoid harm and their survival would be threatened. The second part is the conscious recognition of harm. In humans, this occurs when the sensory neurons in our skin make a second round of connections via the spinal cord to the brain. There, millions of neurons in multiple regions create the sensations of pain. For us, this is a very complex experience associated with emotions like fear, panic, and stress, which we can communicate to others. But it's harder to know exactly how animals experience this part of the process, because most of them can't show us what they feel. However, we get clues from observing how animals behave. Wild, hurt animals are known to nurse their wounds, make noises to show their distress, and become reclusive. In the lab, scientists have discovered that animals like chickens and rats will self-administer pain-reducing drugs if they're hurting. Animals also avoid situations where they've been hurt before, which suggests awareness of threats. We've reached the point that research has made us so sure that vertebrates recognize pain that it's illegal in many countries to needlessly harm these animals.
What did you learn? I forgot. Thank you. Oh, um, this Robert Spunt guy did some neural response analysis on humans and apes and dogs. And he found that attributions of emotion were drawn on shared neural mechanisms of the dorsomedial and lab lateral? Lateral, orbital, frontal, prefront and prefrontal cortices. And he also found that like facial expressions were activated spontaneously in response to this stuff, even without like verbal cues and all that cool stuff. So So what does that mean to you? That animals do respond to emotion, but I was just dramatic. You okay? Yeah. You don't seem very fine. Well, I think my opinion might have changed. Apparently I'm wrong. And I'm actually the one that's the asshole in the situation. Cause, well, they, they told me that if you're mean to an animal, then that they might bite you and they might kill you, which I guess is kind of true. If I went out to the farm and I was messing with my bull, he don't seem to like it when you mess with them. So he's tried to kill me a couple times and I guess that's technically an emotion. <laughs> so. So what did you learn? Uh, I guess animals do have emotions after all and I was wrong. my god! So, have your opinions on animals changed? Why? I think I was wrong. It says here that many people think that empathy is a special emotion that only humans show, but many animals actually express it. And processing empathy is a complex mental ability that takes place in the orbital frontal cortex. My God! Of emotions, like more than us. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> analysis I think on cows no it wasn't cows 